today is the last in our series of mobility and flexibility exercises for runners. I've put together today a short pre-activation program for before your run and then release program for after your run. I don't believe in stretching or foam rolling before you go out for a run unless something is really niggling you. Um, but I do think it's a really good idea to do pre-activation exercises, if, especially if you know you have muscles that are a little bit lazy or very, very short, um, so that you get the most out of your run. Typically, what we see, and we're going to use the roller today, is in a lot of runners that the glutes don't work. Okay, so usually glute max and glute medius and minimus. So we're going to do a bit of activation for them in the standing position using the roller but can absolutely be done without the roller and then we're going to do a little bit of opening of the upper back and the chest because if you're sitting at the desk all day and then you go out for a run you're staying in that sagittal plane and a lot of the time we're rounded forwards in that sagittal plane so just to do a little bit of extension rotation and side bending before you go out will help you to get the most out of out of your session. So let's do the glute activation work first. You're going to stand and again you can use the roller or go without. So um, I'm going to keep the camera as it is. You should be able to see enough. I'll come down as needs be. So I have the roller across the back of my pelvis okay and don't worry if you've got a short roller okay you'll be here. If you've got a long roller the hands can come out wide okay. And really this is just to bring awareness to those glutes. Okay, so you're going to stand and you're going to have the feet hip distance apart. If you're someone who tends to lock the knees, make sure they're soft. That's locked. That's soft. Okay, so make sure the knees are soft and then shift your weight. Let's start by standing on that left foot. So shift your weight into that left foot and lift the knee up in front of the hip. So just stay here for a second. Get used to standing on that left leg. Make sure you feel all of the back of the pelvis against the roller. And then the exercise is to bend your left knee, tip forwards as you lengthen the right leg back behind you. And then come back up tall, lifting the knee up where it came from. Okay, so again, bend, keep that spine nice and long as you tip forwards and lengthen that right leg and then straighten the left leg and come back up. So things to check. As the right leg straightens, you should feel that right glute fire up against the roller. Okay, so that's the big glute max as the hip extends. Okay, so hip extension is done by the hamstrings but also that glute max. So you just want to make sure that's happening and that it's not all hamstrings. If it's not happening, you might need to consciously switch that glute on. So squeeze the right glute as the leg lengthens behind you. You can do these with a the mirror in front of you. You can then check in on that left knee and make sure that as it bends, it goes out to the side. Okay, and doesn't go medial. So and you don't want it going all the way out, but you just want to gently press it out to the side and that will activate minimus and medius in that left hip. So you're working both sets of glutes at the same time. Let's do one more. And then come up, finish where you started, place that right foot down and reset yourself. So both feet facing forwards, knees nice and soft, pubic bone lifting, shift your weight to your right foot and lift your left knee up. Okay, so at the bend of that right knee now, as you lengthen the left leg back behind you, hopefully you're not wobbling like I am, and then come back up, lifting the knee. So check first off that you can feel that roller across the pelvis, and that you can feel that left glute firing as the leg lengthens behind you. Make sure the leg fully straightens. Stay nice and lengthened through the spine. 
The nice thing about this exercise is you're also starting to open your chest just by having the arms out behind you on your roller. Don't worry if you're wobbly. Really good for working all those little intrinsic muscles in that right ankle as well. A few more. If you want more challenge with these, you could do them standing on your mat or on a softer surface. The harder or the firmer the surface, the easier they are. Last time. And then come up and place the foot down. Okay, next one's you can have the roller out to the side for balance. So let's have it out to the right in front of you. Rest that right hand. Stand up tall and again feet facing forward. This is explicitly for the glute medius and minimus, so at the side of the pelvis. Really important for ensuring good leg alignment. Okay, so shift your weight into the outside of the right foot. Left hand on your left hip and then you're going to bring that left leg out to the side and bring it back in. Now you probably don't need the roller. It would be better if you took your hand off so that you had both hands on your hips and that left foot never touches the floor. So you're working into the outside of the pelvis on both legs. The leg you're leaning into and the leg that's moving in and out. So you have to lean off to the left for these to work. It's the same as we've done lying on your side but it's just more functional because you're standing. So this time when the leg goes out, leave it out there. Little pulses up and down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Place that foot down, shift to the other side. Hands stay on your hips and lift and come back. Nice straight leg, keep the foot off the floor, lifting the pubic bone up the front of the body. Two more. So usually 10 reps is plenty and then 10 pulses. Five, four, three, two, one, and then bring the foot in. Okay, I'm going to show you the next ones on the mat. You could absolutely do them standing, but I'm just going to come down so it's easier with the camera. Okay, so kneeling up. It's quite nice to do them kneeling because you can make sure you're opening the front of the hips, which everyone needs. So knees under hips, lift your pubic bone up and drop your tailbone down. So side on, what you want to avoid is too much arch in your lower back. So tailbone wraps, pubic bone lifts, take your roller, Hold it at either end. Again, it doesn't matter if you've got a short roller. So hold it at the flat ends and soften the elbows. Press into the roller and then you're going to lift the arms up. So the roller comes up above the crown of the head and then you're going to lower back down. So really nice and simple. The arms stay straight. You press into the roller. You lift up, looking forwards, and you come back down. So. Each time you lift, see if you can bring the arms back a little bit further behind you so that you're lifting your chest and your eyes as well to extend that upper back. So side on, it looks like this. So you're arcing the upper back and then returning. We've done a little bit of this movement over the week, so it should be familiar. You just don't usually bring the arms up as well. And it should feel like a good stretch. The lower back stays still. The pubic bone is still lifting all the way up and back down. So this time, lift, but don't arc. So the roller should be above the crown of the head. You're pressing in with the hands. You're going to turn the chest. So turn the rib cage to the right, come back to the center, and turn the rib cage to the left, come back to the center. So you're trying to rotate the rib cage, which rotates the chest, the arms, and the head. Make sure that your pelvis stays still. 
So this is undoing that day sitting at the desk, if that's what you've had. Even if it was the day before sitting at the desk. So breathing out to twist. Breathing in to return. One more. Twist. Return. And last time. And return. Okay, lower the arms. Take a break for a second. Turn. For the last ones, you're going to bring the hands back up. Again, reach the crown of the head towards the roller, and then you're going to side bend. Okay, so you reach with that top arm, you lengthen all that left side of the body as you come to the right. You come up tall, and then you do the same thing to the other side. So it's pure lateral flexion of the spine. Breathing out to come over, and breathing in to come back. One more. So that is your activation work. So that's what you do before you go for a run. It took about eight or nine minutes. Okay, so decide for which ones work for you. You might not want to do all of them, but if you know you've got lazy glutes, make sure you do the glute ones. If you know you tend to be tight in the upper back and that can feed into the lower back, do that last little series, moving the upper back. So when you come back from your run, we're gonna go back to a little bit of the work we did last week. So. I always start with quads, so you're going to come down, roll out at the top of your thighs, onto your elbows, belly button to your spine, and make sure you come all the way down to the top of the kneecaps, and all the way back up to the top of the thighs. And don't rush them. So remember, you want to be here for about a minute. All the way up and down. Once you know where you need to be, wherever it's tightest, you stay on that spot. There might be a few of them. Okay, so spend a bit of time on each. If you don't find anything with the hips nice and straight, you can always turn in or turn out. Okay, so different part of the muscle, a really different part of the fascia that covers the muscle. Okay, so after you've done quads, do ITV, okay, not my favourite, not anybody's favourite, but really important. So, straighten the bottom leg, you're coming down the side of the thigh to the top of the knee. So on straight arms, you're on your hands, and you roll up and down. Okay, so again, don't avoid any part of that connective tissue. Keep your weight on the roller. If that all feels okay, you can straighten your top leg. And go up and down with two straight legs, one stacked on top of the other. And again, wherever you need to stay and focus on, take a bit of time there. Okay, other side for ITB. So these are the ones that everyone tends to leave out, but they're often the most important ones, especially if you get knee pain. And then if that feels all right, bring the top leg long and go up and down. So post run, I would focus if you have time on all of those muscles that connect to the hips. So we've done quads, ITV, we're going to do calves and we're going to do glutes and hamstrings. Okay, so calves obviously don't connect directly to the hip, but like we were talking about last week, they're part of that posterior fascial line that feeds up into hamstrings and up into the hips. Okay, so straight legs onto the belly of the muscle, lift up, and then you're going to roll down to the ankles or down to the Achilles and back up to the belly of the muscle. So belly of the muscle is kind of the widest part. It's where the bulk of the muscle is. Make sure your chest is open as you do these. And again, a bit like with the quads, you can turn out 
and you can turn in. It'll work for the shoulders and focus then on where you need to be. So spend a little bit longer than we are today when you're doing these yourself. Glutes next, sit up, come onto your side, bring the foot up onto the knee if the glute is okay with that. If those muscle fibers, this is medius and minimus and piriformis, if they're tight, you might prefer just to keep your foot down. So if they're super short, it's not going to be comfortable or maybe not even possible to lift the foot up. So up to the hip bone, down to the sit bone. You might want to come back more towards the sacrum or you might want to come forwards more onto the side of the hip. Usually you'll know where you need to be. And then same thing on the other side. So some people always complain about the wrist, not like loving this, make sure you keep some weight in the foot. Okay, from here, we're going to do hip flexors and we're going to do hamstring stretch and then you are done. So we did this slightly differently last week. I think we were kneeling on the roller. Okay, so I like this way. It's nice and relaxing. So you've got your pelvis on the roller, which often just feels nice in itself. Legs up to tabletop, hold on to the end of the roller and straighten the legs. And then you're going to bring one leg towards you and lower the other leg down. Hold on to the back of that leg wherever you can reach. Okay, so you're pulling straight leg in towards you. Toes are pointed and you're pulling the leg down towards you. So this is a classic stretch okay, of the hamstrings. There's loads of different ways to do this, as you know. But this is quite nice because you can incorporate it with hip flexor stretch. So you stay here for up to a minute. On each breath out, you pull the leg a little bit closer to you. And then you turn your attention from the leg you're holding onto to the leg that's out long. So you bend the leg you're holding onto, you wrap your hands around the shin or the hamstring if the knee isn't happy. You squeeze the leg in towards you. And with each breath out, you encourage that straight leg to drop down closer to the mat. Okay, so it does take a little bit of while, or a little bit of while, it does take a bit of a while to happen. Okay, you have to be conscious of releasing from the front of the hip and not bending the knee. So ideally your heel makes it down to the floor, but you're still squeezing the leg in towards you. Okay, so let's switch from there. Straighten the leg you're holding onto, switch them over, reach up, hold on to the back of the other leg, pull it in towards you, and again, take some nice deep breaths and encourage those hamstrings to lengthen. You can then fold that knee, wrap your hands around the shin, and release from the front of that right hip. So that is your psoas really important to allow that release. When you're done, you bend the straight leg foot down onto the mat. When the other leg down to join it, lift up and up your roller. Arms come down and you're going to roll down through your spine and just finish with a couple of bridges rolling up and down, releasing into the spine and reminding the glutes that they have to work with the hamstrings, just like at the very start. Okay, that is it. That is your post-run release with your foam roller. Thank you very much.